everybody said? Yeah. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. A study night, power night, solution night, yoke breaking night. Something will happen in your life. What are you? It's coming your way. Father, we thank you tonight for the Bible study. We thank you for what you have done already as we have listened to the Bible reading, listened to all the prayers and our choir and everything. Lord, we pray the name of Jesus will be mighty in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Nothing impossible in that name. No solution will miss us in that name. I pray you send your power forth with your word tonight in Jesus' name. Move every mountain. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let there be joy in the house tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Mark chapter 7. In Mark chapter 7 tonight, we're reading and studying from verse 24 all through to verse 37. Let me select some of the verses for you to understand what we're looking at today. From verse 24, it says, And from thence he arose, and he went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. She brought her problem, the problem of the house, the problem of the home, the problem of the daughter unto Christ. Look at the final result in verse 30. In verse 30, and when he was come to a house, he found the devil come out and a daughter laid upon the bed. Peace had come. Amen. Deliverance came. Amen. And calmness came to that daughter, like the calmness is coming to your house tonight. Amen. And then we're told what happened after that, that he went in verse 31, again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the sea of Galilee. And we're told through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put a hand upon him. They asked for a favor, and they demanded that Christ will touch the child and heal the child. He never said no to any request like that. He will not say no to you. He will not say no to your family. He will not say no to your neighbors. Look at the final result, verse 37. In verse 37, and they were beyond measure astonished. And they said, he had done all things well. He maketh both the dead to hear and the dumb to speak. That final testimony is the testimony we have concerning Jesus Christ. And any time you come in encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you really connect with him, that's the final thing you are going to find in your heart and in your spirit and in your life, in your behavior, in your character, in your profession, in anything that concerns you, you will have to testify when that thing happens like it's happening tonight. Amen. He has done all things well. Say that with me. He has done all things well. That was the testimony. Despite the opposition of devils and men, in the face of religious and rigid tradition, 
the testimony still was in spite of all those things he has done all things well confronted with some belief and ignorance of unbelieving men and sinners all the same he has done all things well among the impotent among the incurable when he touched them when he had contact with them the testimony came out he has done all things well over the turbulence of the waves of the sea of the storm and the roaring of the sea at the end of it all once christ comes in and he manifests his power the testimony is over the storm over the waves he has done all things well if in your family there is any turbulence in your family there is any harassment of the enemy if in your family tonight there's any storm or any waves by the time we finish tonight what's your testimony he has done all things well. The Father testified about his only begotten Son. The Holy Ghost affirmed about the very Son of God. The same thing in everything he did, in all the places he went, in all the families he touched, in all the people he saved. He has done all things well. The sick rejoiced. And their friends and neighbors rejoiced and confirmed with them. And why were they rejoicing? Because he has done all things well. The disciples observed, even the Pharisees and Caiaphas, and they all whispered, he has done all things well. All through past generations, until this generation, the testimony is still the same. Because Christ has not changed, the testimony has not changed. What's the testimony today? He has done all things well. All who have had any real encounter with him upon testifying and upon touching him and he touching them, the thing was uniform with everybody. He has done all things well. As you connect with the Lord tonight, as you reconcile with the Almighty God tonight, as you look at the scriptures tonight, as you hold on to the promises of God tonight, and as you say everything Christ has provided, everything Christ has done is for who? For me. And you know that is for you. And you plug into that, at the end, something will come out of your mouth. He has done all things well. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the unchangeable Christ. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the one that saves, and the one that heals, and the one that delivers, the unchangeable Christ, still doing all things well. That's what we're looking at tonight, the unchangeable Christ, still doing all things well. And tonight, is still active and alive. The risen Christ, the mighty Christ, the omnipotent Christ, and the omnipresent Christ that is with you right there. That thing that you call incurable will be killed tonight. That thing you call impossible will be possible tonight. And he will wipe away your tears. He will break every yoke. He will do all things well. I can almost see you tonight after a Bible study, song in your mouth, joy in your heart, and everything that is gloomy and dark, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. And as I follow you to your house and you enter your house like this, you announce to the people you meet at home, he has done all things well. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. The unchangeable Christ still doing all things well. Three things we're looking at in the study tonight. Number one, the perseverance of a gentile with great faith. The first person that came to Christ, 
She came knowing I will not go back empty handed. She came knowing I'm going to get something from Christ tonight. She came knowing that her great faith will not be disappointed. Point number one, the perseverance of a gentile with great faith. Point number two, the promise of God and its fulfillment. What God had promised, what God had provided, and what God had pronounced, and he had said, this is what I will do as we look at the second part of the story, the fulfillment came. No disappointment in your life? Yeah. Expectation in your life? Yeah. Fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. The promise of God and its fulfillment. Now point number three, the perception of his greatness and finality. The perception of the people that came to Christ, of the people that touched Christ, of the people that connected with Christ, they perceived his greatness. Nothing was impossible for him. They perceived his greatness. He did everything well, and he became the final authority in their lives. All the people that tried to help them, they had tried and failed. The physicians had failed, and the helpers had failed. And when they came to him as the final authority, he put a finality and a final stop to every problem of their lives. Finality tonight. Yeah. I said finality tonight. Yeah. You don't have to go on in your life crying. And you don't have to go on in your life as if you are an unfortunate person. Christ is there. And whenever we come to Christ, he brings a finality. Yeah. The perception of his greatness and the finality. Let's come back to point number one. is the perseverance of a Gentile with great faith. I'm coming back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, had of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, that's a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. I want you to understand, the daughter was not there. The Lord does not need a physical contact before that blessing can pass on to you. Even at a distance, even while you are far away watching, where you are watching now, as the word comes forth and the name of Christ comes forth, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And so she came alone. She didn't bring the child. Maybe the child was too violent or so troubled and traumatic so that she could not bring it, that girl. But all the same power will touch her where she is. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Understand what Jesus was saying? He said, the children of Israel, they were the children of the kingdom. And the promises and the provision belonged unto them. The Gentiles were like dogs. And it was not try right to give the children's bread unto dogs. What Jesus said was true. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Gentiles have sinned further. And they have made themselves dogs, unclean, unacceptable in the sight of the Almighty God. And so Jesus told the truth. And the woman understood the truth. And the woman did not say, do you mean I'm a dog? Do you mean I'm not acceptable? Do you mean I'm a rejected Gentile? Okay, if that's the way uh, Jesus feels and he is accommodating all the ideas of the Jewish people. Bye-bye. I don't have anything to do with you. That woman was wise. You'll be a wise woman. You'll be a wise man. And what you have come for, if you are wise and you keep staying, you will get. Look at, look at verse 28. And she answered and said, Yes, Lord. Don't ever contradict the Lord, whatever he says. He says you are a sinner. Yes, Lord. He says you are unclean. Yes, Lord. 
It says you are not qualified by yourself to enter the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. It says you are powerless. It says you are impotent. And it says all oh, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Don't argue. Yes, Lord. Somebody there say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She said, Yes, Lord. But she didn't stop there yet. The dogs under the table each of the children's crumbs wonderful that's wisdom the lord will give you wisdom yeah. the wisdom to pray the wisdom to ask the lord and the wisdom to demand what you need and it will be given unto you look at verse 29 and he said unto her for this single thy way the devil is gone out of thy daughter for that sin for the proper prayer and for the proper answer that devil is gone from the daughter and then it says in verse 30 and when she was come to her house she found the devil gone out that's what you'll find i said that's what you'll find and her daughter laid upon the bed. Let me read a full account to you in Matthew chapter 15. The same story, but Matthew writes with some details. You know, Matthew was a tax collector and he used to keep records and he wrote everything and has given us the details here. As I look at the detail, I'm going to divide this into three subtitles. Number one, the prayer for great favor. The prayer for great favor. What the woman came for was not a small thing. It was something that no physician in South Phoenicia, in her own gentile community, could do for her. It was a great favor. It was something that not even a Jewish priest could do for her. A great favor. Just one person in the whole of the land and his name is jesus his name is savior his name is redeemer his name is deliverer just that one person could do this for her the prayer for great favor there's a second part to this number two her perseverance with great fervency she didn't allow her fervency to cool down a faith to cool down, a prayer to cool down, a request to cool down, a perseverance with great fervency, and then the power of great faith. The power of great faith. Faith will never fail. And if you have faith in Christ tonight, I shouldn't say if, I should say since you have faith in Christ tonight, all things are possible. Look at the first part here. I'm reading from chapter 15 of Matthew, verse 22. The prayer, the plea for great favor. Look at verse 22 here. And, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. You know, some people are easily discouraged. Some people are easily annoyed. And they feel, what kind of insult is this? I came all the way from the coast of Tyansidon, and I'm pleading, thou son of David, I'm not asking you, Peter, I'm not asking you, John, I'm not asking you, James, I'm asking the Lord, and it's the Lord for all, it's Lord for everyone, he's the son of God, and the son of David, and he is not only for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles, even the Old Testament said so, and I'm asking the Lord, and you are telling the Lord to send me away. All right, if that's your attitude, take your Jesus and monopolize him. Take your Jesus and do anything you want to do with him. Bye-bye, I'm going. Some people, they wear their temper on their sleeves. And they're easily annoyed. But this woman said, no, I came for something 
I'm going to get what I came for. I came for something tonight, somebody there, and I'm going to get what I came for. And whatever the attitude of the people around, whatever the attitude of the people who are close to the Lord Jesus Christ, if the physical is not going to discourage you, it's not going to put you off, you will receive. Yeah. Somebody there said, you will receive. Yeah. And then look at verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not saint, but unto the house of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That woman heard that, but he that said she did not hear. Verse 25, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, he still called him Lord. He said, you are Lord. He said, you are master. Whatever you are saying, you are saying out of your divinity, out of your sovereign. I accept that completely. And then she said, Lord.